In problem 70, I showed you how to derive the CDF from a PDF, and it was a simple example. I did a tougher question in problem 41, where the random variable was neither discrete nor continuous. This one sits between the two, so watch 70 before watching this one. In this case, we also have a continuous random variable, but it's what we call piecewise because it comes in pieces. You can see one, two pieces. I'm going to just sketch it. So between 0 to 3, it looks like this. It's a curve. 3 to 5, it's a third. It's a horizontal line. 0 otherwise. So it means outside 0 to 5, it takes 0. So they're in blue. I want to emphasize at this point that x takes the value, our outcome can take the value between 0 to 5 and since x is continuous guys we're not going to fuss about strict inequality so here it's got greater than or equal to 0 we could equally replace it by bigger than 0 x is continuous likewise here less than 5 could place it by less than or equal to 5 and this could stick an equal there as well so you see it in textbooks that's why you get all kinds of notation here it doesn't matter because it's continuous what I want to really focus on as well as solving it is are the questions that YouTubers ask about CDF because there are a lot of common questions and uh, misconceptions about the CDF so I want to kind of uh, address those today. Okay guys so let's kick off. Um, CDF uh, calculated at point A by definition is the probability that x is less than or equal to that value A. We know that for continuous random variable if we pick a point say A is 2 then the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is the area to the left of the graph. I think you'll agree. So, we've, and since it's continuous, we're going to find this area by integration. Okay, this area under the graph anyway. If I want to find the probability x is less than or equal to 3, I'll do that, and it's all area there, yeah? And if x is 4, would you agree that I find this area and it's everything to the left? I'm going to emphasize if x is 4, we find the area. To everything to the left so not up just up to here in this brown segment that matches this bit here I'm finding everything so that bit and all this stuff are in the first segment how about if I want to find a probability x is less than not less than or equal to 4 but less than 4 well nothing changes guys because as I've written here in this ink when x is continuous, talking about x is less than or equal to 4 will be the same as saying talking about x is less than 4. Okay, and that's the reason it's given here. And, and this reason also explains what I said earlier about setting these inequalities to strict or not strict. Okay. Okay, CDF now. Um, so we're going to get this. I'm going to show you how uh, sh working to get this thing here, but I want to kind of interpret it. So it comes in like four pieces as well. This blue matches this blue, this green matches this green ink. Uh, it's a curve, straight, this horizontal line is this, we get this uh, straight line here. Uh, this blue bit goes with that bit. I think a lot of questions that students come up with um, is because they don't realize what they can use this graph for. Suppose guys, uh, i go back to the CDF again, a PDF. What's well, supposed to x is less than 2? As I said, it's the area to the left, yeah? And you just have to do an integration here because it's continuous. But if you had the CDF, guys, all you have to do is read off the graph because by this is by definition of CDF. So if I want probability x is less than or equal to 2, just read off the graph here. It's that. What's well, probability x is less than or equal to 3? Well, if I go to the PDF, I'd have to find the area to the left. Okay, that involves working. But if I have this graph here, I just kind of read straight off the graph. Oh, probability x is less than or equal to 3? Oh, it's a third. What's the probability x is less than or equal to 5? It's, read off the graph, oh, it's 1. At this point, we're ready for our first questions. This is like the biggest question that will come up. Uh, at this stage, the students would ask, why is it that the probability x is greater than or equal to 5 and 1? I.e., why shouldn't it be something else, like 0? Why? So CDF 1, when x is greater than 5, we know that distribution when x is greater than 5 is 0. And let's look at the second point of this question. Also, for a cumulative CDF above 5, shouldn't it be 0 since there's no area? 
Okay, so those people have been thinking about the problem, that's good. Now let's address the points. I said here that x can take the values between 0 to 5, yeah? So the outcome must be between 0 to 5. Now, if we read off here, let's pick a value bigger than 5. This is like 6, let's say. What's probably to x is less than or equal to 6? It's 1. Why isn't it 0? Well, we know that x must be between 0 to 5. So if x is less than or equal to f between 0 to 5, it's certainly less than or equal to 6 because that is what the CDF is giving you. Notice this is a different question to asking me what's the property of x is greater than 5. Property of x is greater than 5 would certainly be 0 because the outcome can only take the value between 0 to 5. So outside that, the property is 0. Now, the point that the other person made is this, look. For 5 onwards, the area under the curve is 0. So why isn't the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 0? Well, because you haven't understood the definition of the CDF. The CDF, you are right in pointing out the area under th this 5 onwards is 0. But the CDF says probability that x is less than or equal to a particular value. Okay, let's pick 6. Okay, that means that it's the area to the left. Okay, there's, there's no area here, right? But there's area all under here. So you've got to calculate that as well. Yeah, so it's not just looking at simply a bit of the segment that you're interested in. Which is why when I said when you look at probability x is less than or equal to 4, you don't just calculate this segment here under the brown. It's got to be everything to the left. Even if the bit you're looking at here is flat. Still to the left of it, all is that. That is not zero area. Okay, I don't. I think you can rewind and rewatch that if you want to kind of, because uh, I think I've explained that bit here. The uh, next thing is uh, more minor. Why is it called a cumulative distribution function? Okay, the reason is this: I pick a point A, say two. What happens if you pick a point higher than two? Do you agree that the probability that the area increases? Yes, uh, and therefore the probability increases. Now the CDF tracks these probabilities, so it changes the probabilities as it's moving from left to right. So it's adding more and more probability as you're going from left to right because the area is increasing. Hence it's cumulative because you're adding on probabilities. And as we explained in problem 70, that's why this one of the properties here is that it's non-decreasing function because as you're moving from left to right, you're always adding um, you're always adding area of at least zero. So you might not be adding area like here but at least it can't be falling so that's why you can see it doesn't have any dips as you're going from moving from left to right now I'm going to show you how to get the um, algebraic parts of the one these thick of the CDF so this is the answer I've kind of compiled it and this is the way it's nice you know to write it this is the CDF it comes in one two three four bits these two bits match the non-zero bits of the PDF, and this is just a window dressing, just to, you know, because uh, PDF, uh, CDF, because its probability must be between zero to one. So just kind of writing the obvious. You don't have to do any workings for this bit. It's always the uh, workings is on the bit of the PDF, which is not the uh, zero. All right, and how to do it is the same as problem 70 except for we do it piece by piece so we can just do it this piece ignoring all the other bits then repeat so let's do it for 0 to 3 so by definition it's a, saying for, calc for a certain point x we're doing it up to x right of, of uh, the PDF integrating it looking at area IE I'll go back to 70 if you want an explanation of the notation here I've used t instead of x and x okay so I compute that thing, x cubed 81, that's not very interesting. Okay, repeat for the second bit, 3 to 5. Right, now, now, 3 to 5, I need to pause. 3 to 5, the PDF in the equation has given us this segment here, yeah? But the CDF is like for any point here, it's got to be the area entirely to the left. So it's got to be made up of this bit under the green, which is explained by the first segment of the PDF, plus our new bit. Okay? And that's what I've got here. That's why this bit is divided into two. 
to use a different color here. So this bit is our first segment. You can see that this is probably the CDF calculus at three. And then this is the other bit. Uh, can I draw, draw a picture here somewhere? How did this thing look? I've forgotten. Uh, Alright, so like that and then like that, okay, where the break is at 3. Put, 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 3. Alright, so I've got this bit here, can I just shade that? That bit is this bit here, plus this bit here which goes up to the point X. Uh, pick X somewhere like here. Alright, so I've got that bit and then pick small picture note, All right, and then this one here. All right, so that's what this bit is. It's made up of two pieces, that, and then this bit, which involves up to the point x, where x is the value between zero to three, uh, 3 to 5. Okay, that's the main step. And then I just compute it. So this one at 3 is going back over here to the first segment and substituting x for 3. Okay, it's that, and then this. Uh, the other point I really want to say is... Um, why I've written it like this? You don't have to write it like this. You might have written, what would you have written? Uh, you might have written a third pl uh, minus, minus, well, a, a third times minus three is minus one. So you might have just collected that together and plus a third x. I've done it like this. Why? Uh, it's a way to check your answers, guys. Why? Because you know that the CDF, right, the area under the curve of the PDF must be. I mean all this bit must be 1 because it's one of the properties of the PDF it's 1 so if we compute it at like the biggest um, point here 5 or anything uh, yeah a limit here 5 plug in 5 here it must be 1 and that's a way to check your answer so check your answer stick in the upper limit here 5 it's got to be 1 so you can see that quite clearly it's going to be 1 Right, so notation of uh, things that can go wrong. That's always the interesting bit. Things that can go wrong when you're doing this. Obvious things that can go wrong. Right. So when you're going calculating this from x to three to five, this is wrong. You're not looking at just one segment, i.e., this one. Forgetting about this segment, because then that is just looking at this portion in blue, which is not everything to the left of x. But that's like a common error. Another thing is it's easy just to slip up on this is you write this for the CDF uh, this thing in purple is the thing that's wrong okay because you've got you're saying both of these bits are zero because you're probably thinking about the PDF but no okay it's like this and like that now one thing another question I just kind of recall now another question that a student would ask here is all right let's look at your CDF here they would say uh, okay, why isn't it zero here? Why is it a three? Why is it a three? Well, because as was described right at the beginning, this is how you use a CDF. You pick a particular point, say four, and you read off that graph. So this bit here is like, if you pick a value four, you go down here, and you go, okay, four is between these two values, three and five. All right, so it'll be given by this value. If x is two, you go down here say oh 2 is between 0 to 3 okay the CDF value at that 2 will be given by this value here that's what I've done in green the bit in brown here takes consideration of all that because I said it's area to the left of everything to um, to your X value um, but why yeah and also um, why the PDF comes in segments is because CDF comes in segments because the PDF comes in segments so the shape here from 0 to 3 is different from the shape from 3 to 5 and that affects the kind of shape of the CDF in other words uh, how the uh, probabilities accumulate you know the um, values so be quite clear we don't set this to 0 because we've got a 0 here right uh, so that's the CDF that's as much as I can think at the moment so um, well I hope that's been helpful comment like share